So it looks like Joey Diaz sat down on his podcast and decided to, in a way, chastise um, some of the haters out there and the trolls regarding Brendan Shaw. And I thought it's a really interesting comment that he made because it feels like to me, Joey Diaz can't make his mind up on Brendan. One minute, he's like the worst thing to happen to comedy in that he said that comment about Mr. Shaw would have never let Brendan get up on the comedy store. He makes other passing comments that aren't the greatest, right? Backhanded compliments. Like he didn't want Lisa yet to end up like Brendan. That's why he guided him a different way when he was coming up. Like I love Uncle Joey but you know he's clearly you know he's clearly minding his words when it comes to Brendan because how close he is to Joe and maybe because he's actually friends with him also but he knows deep down the guy sucks at comedy that's it from his point of view I don't think he cares about him as a person but the comedy thing he knows the guy sucks and he seems to have a real hard time understanding why people online such as myself uh, dedicate so much time to pointing out why he sucks um, and I will try to explain as best as I can on the other side but this is a clip taken from the Joey Diaz uh, sorry Uncle Joey's joint his podcast where he speaks about it like it's like Joey what the fuck where you been you used to post every day now you post once a week or you post twice a week but it's funny i between posting and when i wake up in the morning sometimes you know listen youtube is the early is the easiest thing for me to listen to music sometimes i'll think of an album like this last week i've been mike will tell you i'm hooked on dirt again the album dirt by allison chains is fucking sensational and you forget how good these albums are and sometimes you put them on two weeks ago it was diary of a madman you know a week before that it was santana i'm one of those fucking guys i like music but every time i go to youtube if there's nine videos on this page here two of them are about health one of them was about side control one of them is music and the other ones i just fucking hate like <laughs> you oh my god and, 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 and there's no particular like they just hate on everybody and i'm gonna explain hate to you because i didn't understand hate till i started comedy and there was a guy andrew dice clay that made me laugh now and he made me he made me laugh then and he still makes me laugh now. And I watched him go from being a great comic to an overhead, overnight sensation. I mean, let's fucking face it. He was the first arena comic, you know? This guy was doing numbers you could never dream about. I remember I was there. I was part of his fan club. You know, I liked what he did. I wasn't one of these knuckleheads, you know, say a poetry thing, no. But I enjoyed him. I was there when... You know, he went on the MTV thing and he went said whatever he did and he got banned from MTV. You know, I still remember these things. And I saw him from an HBO special he did live in Philadelphia to just become this fucking rock and roller. And I remember his, you know, there was no internet back then. But I remember every day his, uh, his name was in the paper every fucking day. And I know that you guys think that you're hating, that you're, you know, doing something spectacular. And I get it. There's not a lot. Of, I don't like everybody either. That's what makes this world so special. That we all can't like everybody. But I'm not going to sit there every day and make a video about some comic I do not like. You know, for you people who love making these videos, you're making Brendan Schaub a millionaire. Do you understand this? Listen, I like Brendan. I respect Brendan. Brendan's a fucking sweetheart of a guy. Listen, you guys went down there expecting to see George Carlin and you saw something else. And all of a sudden, they saw his special and you don't like it. And all of a sudden, people started terrorizing him. And I know he says knucklehead stuff from time to time, but I know where Brendan's heart is. And I got to be honest with you. If you don't like Brendan, that's fine. Listen, I don't like, uh, you know, Carmel Rocky Road chocolate. And guess what? Do you think that fucking Carvel gives a fuck? Do you think that fucking Baskin Robin gives a fuck? They don't. Come in here and get something that you do like. And that's fine. You know, I've, I've expressed my shit about Roger Waters and whatever. Listen, he's a fucking multimillionaire. I'm not helping that fucking dude. I know everybody knows he's a dickhead. But, you know, when you guys pick on a comic or an actor or a, a band and you go after them like that, all you're doing with all your hate is putting tons of money in his fucking pocket. You guys say Brendan sucks? Guess what? It's like the chick when she died. You know, I don't want to go to rehab. I said, no, no, no. I knew if I go there, she's going to be on heroin. I know she might pass out or I know she might not show up. Why are people paying $200 over fucking price tag to go to those concerts? Because it, it might be the best show. It might be the best show you ever saw, but the main thing is people love a train wreck. There you go. So, listen, I love half these guys. Are they George Carlin? Are they Dave Chappelle by your standards? Are they Jerry Seinfeld? No, neither am I. And guess what? 
I don't give a fuck. I didn't opt out to be Jerry Seinfeld or Louis C.K. I appreciate them, but I don't give a fuck. But when you guys keep making videos, like I just see random stupid shit. Like it's like you had the time to produce this. Think of the, the think of if you took that time and did something positive with your fucking time. You'd be making the same money he's making by fucking, oh, yeah. and it goes into your pocket. True. But you're going to produce a video, you're going to get a couple of YouTube streams, some envelopes, <laughs> and that's fine. But Brendan's still getting richer. And I'm not saying this is about Brendan. I'm not saying this is about Brendan at all. I'm using him as an example because, if, like I said, if I see 10 videos, four of them are about fucking Brendan. So it's like, guys, knock it off. You don't like somebody, you don't like me, you don't like a certain comic, move on, move on. Comedy Central's got a thousand comics on there. Netflix has a thousand comics, and guess what? YouTube even has more comics. So you don't have to bank on these guys. Like I said, for me, they're my friends. I know them. I love them. I wish them all well and shit like that. Yeah, right. I don't like that they're getting fucking, uh, you know, tortured every day. <laughs> but at the same time, nervous week. your hate is creating his fucking bank account. And meanwhile, you're struggling to pay the fucking car payment. Ouch. So you talk to me about this shit. Ouch. And with that, I love you motherfuckers with all my heart. Thank you. Ouch, Uncle Joey. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Interesting. So many things to kind of dissect from that clip. Number one, the start of it was hilarious. How he says he goes onto YouTube and of the 10 videos he sees, four of them are stuff hating on Brendan. The fact is, he's probably watched a few of those videos. That's why they come up in the YouTube. That's how YouTube works. <laughs> if you start watching videos, even if you don't like them, the algorithm starts feeding you more stuff in and around that subject. So clearly he's watched a couple and he's pissed off that it keeps arriving in his, in his uh, flipping um, feed. And because he's a boomer, he doesn't know how to, you know, mark it as not interested. So it doesn't pop up anymore in his feed. So he's an annoyed at that so basically he's annoyed more at youtube than he's annoyed at anybody else then the other comments um around people saying what you call it bad stuff about brendan and stuff right and just in general comments because joey's a weird one because like i said he's made various comments that kind of disparaging against brendan the thing that he said about you know if mitzi was around he'd never be performing at a comedy store him saying the backhanded compliment that he didn't want lisa to end up like him so he knows the points that people have about why they maybe don't like the guy right um for me personally, I come at it as a fan. And as a fan, as somebody that still, you know, holds these weird kind of um, naive, hopeful, somewhat Christian Catholic thinking, my, in my head, I'm hoping there's a redemption arc. So as much as I like to rag and cover this sort of stuff, I don't really go as hard as other people in other channels. If anything, I try to be as fair as possible because I started off as a fan. I started off being as a fan, like most homeless cats on the Fire and the Kids subreddit, over 100,000 strong. Most of those guys on there are former fans. People don't understand this you don't just come into this thing straight in the guy straight away you become a fan you start watching and then you realize oh this guy stinks and then you move on and then you go to homeless cats you join them and you start la laughing at it and the thing that these comics don't understand as well which i think is interesting overall especially when you think they're comedians and they take the piss out of stuff they don't understand like there's always going to be an opposite so if there are fans out there and again use your imagination if there are fans out there who are tattooing joe rogan's face on their body and sending the clips to Joe, and he's uploading the clips when they, you know, it's just, it's a thing that he always posts, he doesn't get bored of posting it when people, when someone's getting tattooed and the tattoo artist wipes away the flipping foam on the top of the tattoo and reveals Joe Rogan's face like staring on their skin. If that person exists, and again, I'm not taking a piss out of her because I believe in being a fan. I'm an actual fan of people. I like being a fanboy. I like supporting people. I like buying people's merch. I like going to their shows. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm an unapologetic fan. I would never get a tattoo of Joe Rogan on my body ever, ever, but I can understand people get it. If that person exists, you also have to understand the opposite person exists. The one who thinks Joe Rogan's dumb, the one who thinks he's talking out of his ass, the one that nitpicks everything he says, the one that takes a piss out of him. That person exists. So they, for some reason, some of these comic, some of these comics don't understand the back, the, the the kind of the two ends of that spectrum: the super fan and the super hater. They do exist, unfortunately. It is part of it, and they both maybe contribute overall to that person's success. But I wouldn't say monetarily, because as much as these channels exist that kind of poke fun at Brendan, none of these guys, myself included, will ever buy merch. The most thing I'm considering getting was that Dicey Dicey's top. None of us are ever going to buy tickets. 
None of us are ever going to go to shows. None of us are ever going to really support the, the specials and shit. People, I, I know there's some people on the subreddit who didn't even watch the special on YouTube. They had let somebody else rip it and then they watched it themselves. So they, they didn't even contribute to the views on his actual video itself, which is probably why he went and bought views, if you believe what um, BGL says. So the idea that we're making the guy rich is a little bit far-fetched. You could maybe say we're contributing to the overall, you know, algorithm bump. And maybe if you keep his name in your algorithm, it's going to make brands and advertisers more prone to backing him and stuff. Okay, fair play. That that's something to be said but i think at the heart of it to be fair and again these guys never address this sort of stuff because he's my friend i like him cool but i don't understand why people especially these couple of guys don't understand why some of their friends might be unlikable like you should know this like we i, I myself have friends and i know people who of who other friends i have don't like and you know why your other friends don't like them, but you just ride with your friend because you're a friend and you're okay and you don't mind, you know, putting whatever dislike other people have for them to one side. But you know why some people don't, even with yourself, even with myself, I can understand why there are parts of my personality that some people wouldn't particularly like. And I can definitely get where they're coming from. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if I heard it. It just is what it is. Some people are not for everybody. So I just don't understand their lack of acknowledging or acknowledgement of why some people won't like Brendan as a human. Forget all the comedy stuff. Just imagine him as a human, as a personality, um, you know, some of his, you know, stuff that he does and stuff. People just don't, can't even get that around their head. Then you've got the other people, I think, who hate him, who are more so on the kind of not liking him because of his career trajectory. And these are actual stand-up comedy nerds and geeks who legitimately think you should only do com. You should there, there's kind of one way to kind of do stand up when you're coming up. It's the kind of conventional doing open mics, busting your art type of thing, and then eventually you get to a position where you get good enough where you get you know pass that store and you might get a special blah blah blah. Those guys are always going to hate him because he jumped too many steps and he bragged about it and he didn't understand that the steps that he jumped added maybe didn't help him in terms of him being funny so those guys are going to hate him so you're going to get and, and and he's unique too in brendan's case because he's got a lot of people that don't like him from his days in the ufc he's got a lot of people that don't like him from just being a guest on joe rogan and not liking his opinions and that he sucks up to joe a lot of people that don't like him for how he changed from the tfat k on fox to the tfat k you know independent quote unquote and how he kind of you know morphed into this weird narcissistic guy who spit thin skin and can't even receive criticism and there's people that don't like him because of the stuff that he's done in comedy now the bobby lee stuff the annie lederman stuff the kalila stuff like you know all these things are you would imagine points that people could point at and say hey these are the reasons why i'm not a fan of this guy and if they want to make videos po poking fun at it it's all well and good i don't really see the issue in it to be honest because if you're a fan of his you're not really going to listen to anything anyone says because you're a fan. That's what you do when you're a fan. You enjoy what you enjoy and no one's really going to change your mind on it. I just think these guys, weirdly enough, are incredibly um, unable to receive any criticism, really, even if it's just poking fun at them because for the most part, it's not really that serious. If you go on the subreddit, for the most part, everyone's just taking a piss at the things the guy says. No one's really putting words in his mouth. People are just highlighting, hey, he can't speak English. Hey, why is he using that word wrong? Hey, why doesn't he know this stuff? Hey, why is he unable to like listen without interrupting every two seconds? All these things are like things that he does. No one's putting words in the guy's mouth. So he could he could easily see those videos of compilations of him pronouncing things horrible. There's a there's a clip going on now on the Final Kiss subreddit of him reading out a sponsor. It's a sponsor for some legal firm. So they probably paid a decent amount of money, you think, for that spot on the podcast. And he's announcing um what the referral code is. And I think it's like law, right? It's like something, something law as a referral code, that like forward slash. And he's saying lol as in L O L, as in laughing out loud. You can't pronounce law. He's saying law. You would imagine somebody like that would would hear the recording and be like, you know what? Let's re-record that because that sounds insane. But he doesn't. Just puts it out because there's no quality control. He just goes. And of course, people on the subreddit take that, clip it, and make fun of it because it is hilarious that he can't say the word law, yet he says law, and he's a multi-millionaire. It's just funny. It's funny to laugh at. I don't think many people that make these videos are legitimately, maybe unique, maybe it's the only person that is hoping for it, but I don't think anybody, myself included, really are making these videos hoping the guy gets, you know, becomes broke and has to beg for money on the street. It's just fun to do.
It's just fun to poke fun at these guys who legitimately take themselves way too seriously. Who, instead of getting on a podcast and trying to be funny and trying to make each other laugh, they get on there and start pontificating about life. They start trying to give you life advice when some of them have got three divorces on behind them, where some of them don't even see their own kids, where their wives don't like them, right? <laughs> where they've got failed businesses. They're trying to give you business advice, philosophical. Some of them try to give you philosophical advice when they've been accused of rape. And you're like, excuse me? <laughs> Maybe you're not the right person person for me to get my life advice from maybe you need to sit this one out but they take themselves way too seriously so it's quite fun to laugh at it that's all it is really it's not that serious it really isn't but you know if they want to look at it that way it is what it is um and i just find it funny because again i like uncle joey um, i listen to the podcast all the time it's one of my kind of um weekly jaunts i kind of listen to i know he's got a book coming out soon autobiography um that's be coming i think in the next couple of weeks i'm definitely going to grab that and read it and probably do a review of it in the channel and you know he's kind of distanced himself from that whole crew so maybe he doesn't really know the intricacies of what's going on with brendan and stuff because he lives in new jersey now and he's kind of doing his own thing but you know come on come on uncle joey like we know what you were saying early on when brendan was popping up you know what you were saying we know how awkward that pod was when he went on to find the kid and he basically admitted to brendan that he was avoiding him because he heard he was into stand-up and he didn't want to talk to him if he was terrible you know like we know what he thinks about so um yeah uncle joey doesn't really understand this whole world and which is perfectly fine you know he's an older dude um he's also the friends of these guys but i just don't like the kind of the clear denial of like when somebody's a piece of shit and somebody might be a bit of a douchebag you can still be their friend but just denying that fact is really insulting to everyone's intelligence one other thing i've got this is a hot take for me i think part of the problem i think yeah i think these stand-up comedians and these podcasters have contributed to the overblown criticism and hate that people spew towards brendan Shaw. let me tell you why there was a period in time when when Brendan was in the good graces of Joe Rogan, when he didn't make that comment about bald guys slanging dick and he was still really pally pally with the guy, they were clearly best friends. You could tell they could talk all the time. Um, Brendan was racking up the appearances on Joe Rogan on their solo and clearly having a good time and hanging out with the guy and they were getting along really, really well. During that whole entire time when he was Joe Rogan's right-hand man in the podcasting space, no one in comedy wanted to say the real that you'd be surprised was terrible he's a horrible comic he should have never been given a special that early on in, in his career um he's too arrogant he's too pompous he doesn't think his shit stinks blah 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 no one wanted to admit that everyone just kind of ignoring it saying how much of a great guy he was great guy beast of a guy nice guy great guy beast of a guy great guy never met him that's what people kept saying cool i think because these comedians were like so defensive and so unwilling to listen to anybody that was saying no this guy's making your industry look bad how has this guy got a special on showtime and other guys don't why is he performing at the comedy store this guy's terrible because they were unwilling unwilling to recognize that i think people myself included and maybe others went overboard into trying to really make it clear no this guy sucks so their refusal to acknowledge it caused people to go even harder to display and to maybe um, illustrate why they think the guy sucks, which is why we got this weird kind of Bapaverse economy that exists now, where every little dumb thing that he does keeps getting blown up. And again, the guy has to receive some blame for it. He surrounds himself with a flipping gaggle of absolute toxicity. Look what's happening with BGL just now he's released a whole slew of screenshots alleging that you know brendan might be cheating on his wife and he just the other week was accused of domestic violence do you know what i mean like this is the people that he surrounds himself with these are the people that he kind of deems to be his friends his co-host was accused of rape do you know what i mean <laughs> you like what his other best friend in crystal Lear was accused of diddling like these are the people he's like like it's not our fault like we don't make like we're not we're not making those guys his friends he's choosing them to be his friends he's riding or dying with them he's there crying on camera i can't talk i can't talk when chris Lear gets flipping accused of flipping um flipping diddling but when his wife's mum or no when his wife's mum's grandmother passed away he was acting like it was no big deal like she was making too much of a big deal out of it when they went to another funeral they were wearing funeral fits and shit people have to laugh about this sort of stuff you have to poke fun at it because it's absolutely ridiculous and it's crazy what regular human or normal human does something like that no one 
So that's why people kind of want to poke fun at this. So the 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 the, the refusal to accept that sort of stuff is weird. I understand of it because it's maybe because they're friends, but really it's not that deep. People like to laugh at people that say dumb things on the internet, and it will never end. It will never ever end. If you stop saying dumb shit on the internet, if you stop maybe being so thin skinned, if you maybe could lean into the joke or lean into the meme and not take himself so seriously and understand when people laugh at him and maybe you know profit from it in the real way. It will die immediately, but it's impossible to do so. He just turned 40 the other day. If he's not going to be thin-skinned now, he's never not going to be thin-skinned. So it just is what it is. Like, you know, what can you do? But hey, uh, be up Uncle Joey, same time. Still like the guy, and I will be checking out the book when it does eventually come out because I still like the guy, even though he doesn't like me, clearly. He doesn't like me. But yeah, I don't know, man. And and I also get the feeling, like I said before, a lot of these guys have contempt for their audience. I think there's like a very thinly veiled, under the radar contempt they have for their audience, especially if they say something negative. They want you to consume their, their stuff, buy their stuff and double tap and like their stuff. They don't want you to say anything back. No communication, no constructive criticism, no make some jokes, no, nothing, zero, nothing, just just consume buy my merch say how amazing i am call me a murderer call me a beast but the moment you have something to say oh what you said about that thing was dumb why are you talking about um covid when you have no knowledge of it who made you an expert in biology why are you telling me about the economy when you've been rich all your life why are you telling me about philosophy when you just have been accused of rape they don't want to hear that they don't want to hear that stuff so, you know what i mean they don't want to hear that they do not want to hear that but if you praise them and you get tattoos of them on their body suddenly greatest fan Never met him. All right. Whatever you have to say, my friend. Whatever you have to say is still fun the same way.